Okay, so welcome back to physics problem solving uh, once again. Uh, we're still working here on two-dimensional kinematics, and I want to do a problem today that looks like a two-dimensional kinematics problem, but it is in fact a one-dimensional kinematics problem if you're clever about how you set the problem up. Okay? So uh, this is an example about bobsledding. Bobsledding is one of my favorite Olympic sports. Um, at the Utah Olympic Park, uh, you can pay still to go bobsledding. So one of these days when I go back west, I'm going to pay to do that so I can actually experience what it's like to fly down a mountain in an Olympic bobsled. So let's suppose you and I are doing that together, and we start from the rest at the top of a 125 meter long bobsled run. And in this case, let's imagine that the the run is straight and it slopes down at an angle of 40 degrees. Now this is a uh, typical kind of statement you get when you uh, are having hills described to you and so usually that angle 40, which is the way we're going to interpret it today, means the angle measured upward from the horizontal. Okay, and so the questions we want to know is how long does it take the bobsled to reach the bottom of the run? Okay, we're going to assume that the ice is completely frictionless um, in this problem, which is something that we uh, kind of always assume in problems like this because we haven't learned to deal with friction yet. Okay, so that's the statement of the problem. Now, this problem could be solved in a two-dimensional way. Um, as with all things that we encounter, there is more than one way to solve these physics problems. I'm not going to solve that for you in the two-dimensional method because it takes a lot longer and it's a little bit more complicated. Instead, I'm going to convince you that by a clever choice of coordinates, I can convince that uh, I can transform that two-dimensional problem into a one-dimensional problem. So the way I do this, um, as always, is I start by drawing a picture. So let's imagine the bobsled run. Okay, so the bobsled run is a long, straight, uh, downward slope. Okay, we're told that the angle of the slope is 40 degrees, like that. Okay, and I have my bobsled up here, okay, on the hill. And the bobsled has all of its motion pointing down the hillside. Okay, and that's one of the clues that uh, should point me to the idea that I can solve this problem as a one dimensional problem. The motion of the bobsled here is purely in one direction. So the way that I'm going to make my life easier. To, uh, uh, in terms of making this a one-dimensional problem is rather than using uh, the coordinates that might instinctively be used, namely coordinates that look like they're parallel to what you and I normally call horizontal and vertical, let me label that capital Y and capital X, Okay, those might be the problem, uh, the coordinates that you want to solve the problem in. Uh, let me imagine setting up a slightly different coordinate system. I'm free to do that. Nature doesn't care about coordinates. There's something that we invent to make it easy for us to talk about problems and to solve problems. And in fact, I'm going to choose coordinates where the x-axis points straight down the hill. So this will be plus x. And the y-axis is perpendicular to the hill, so that will be plus y. Okay, so if I go back to the original way I drew the picture, what you see is that our coordinate system is tipped. It's uh, leaned over such that it is parallel to the side of the hill. Now, that makes a little bit of work for us um, early on because it means we will have to decompose some vectors. But in the end, what this will allow us to do is only work with one set of kinematic equations, namely the kinematic equations that describe the motion in the x direction. Okay? So what's the deal here with decomposing vectors? Well, the question is, what is the thing that's making us go in this problem? Well, the thing that's making us go in this problem is gravity. The acceleration due to gravity is pulling the bobsled, or is pointing straight down from the bobsled, like that. And all I really care about is the part of that acceleration vector that's actually pointing down the hill. 
Okay, so what I need to do is I need to decompose that g vector, that acceleration vector, in these x and y coordinates that I've drawn over here that are pointing diagonally down the hill. Now when you just stare at a picture like this, it probably hurts your head a little bit to think about it because your coordinates are tipped and this vector is pointing one way. How am I going to actually uh, decompose this into this coordinate system? Well, what I like to do is I like to draw a second picture. So over here, I'm going to draw a picture that is aligned with my plus x coordinate system. Okay, so that is my bobsled on the side of the hill where my plus x coordinate system is pointing this direction on the front of the bobsled. And so the question is, what is the g vector in this picture? Well, comparing it with my original picture over here, the g vector points like this. This is the acceleration vector due to gravity. So I could figure out what the component of that vector was if I knew some angles, in particular if I knew that angle theta right there. So how am I going to figure out what that angle theta is? Well, in order to figure out that angle theta right there, I go back to my original picture. That angle theta that I've marked there is actually this angle right here. And this angle is part of the right triangle that's formed by the g vector and the hill slope angle right here that I know. Since this is a right triangle, that means the angle here formed with the g vector is 90 degrees. And so what that means is that this angle and this angle, theta, the angle that I'm interested in, must sum to 90 degrees. Or in other words, the angle theta is equal to 50 degrees. Okay? So now that I know the angle theta, I can decompose the g vector into its x and y components, where the x and y components are the x component here and the y component here. It's the parts of g that point down the slope or the parts of g that point into the slope. And I can figure out what both of those are using a little bit of trigonometry in my angle there. So the x component, which is the only one that I care about because I'm thinking about motion in the x direction. So the gx component is equal to the magnitude of g, and if I look at this uh, angle here, that's times the cosine of theta. So that is 9.80 meters per second per second times the cosine of 50 degrees. And if I evaluate what that is, I find that the x component of g is 6.30 meters per second per second. So what does that mean? What that means is, from the perspective of the bobsled, the only thing that's happening is I'm accelerating straight down the slope, as if I was being accelerated with an acceleration of 6.30 meters per second per second. Okay? So that's all the information I need. I can start uh, setting up my kinematic table. This is now a one-dimensional problem. I have all the information I need to do the x problem in kinematics. So my kinematic table is x, x naught, v, v naught, a, and t. I'm allowed to choose my origin of coordinates, so I'm going to choose that my initial position is zero meters at the top of the slope. I'm told that I start from rest, so my initial speed is zero meters per second. I just computed that my acceleration is 6.30 meters per second per second. I have no idea what my final speed is. I know that the length of the run is 125 meters. And I have no idea how long it takes me to get to the bottom of the run. Okay, so that's the complete information uh, that we need, or that we've been told, or I've figured out already.
Okay? And so what the problem asked me to find is how long does it take me to get to the bottom of the slope? Okay, so I'm going to write out my kinematic equations. There's x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus a half a t squared. V is equal to v naught plus a t and v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2a delta x. Okay? Now, I could do this problem any number of ways. I could go ahead and solve for time. So if I wanted to solve for time, this is the optimal equation to do it because I know everything in this equation except for time. Now, the problem with using this equation, and one of the reasons that I often avoid it, is because you have to solve a quadratic equation to do it. But in this case, we don't actually have to solve the quadratic equation because my initial speed is zero, and so this becomes a very straightforward equation to use. So let's go ahead and do it that way. So if I were to take that equation and write it out, x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus a half a t squared. If I look at my kinematic table, my initial position is zero and my initial speed is zero. And so algebraically, this equation becomes very simple, namely that x is equal to a half a t squared or t is equal to the square root of 2x over a. So that is the amount of time that it takes me to slide from the top of the slope to the bottom of the slope. So if I numerically evaluate that, t is equal to 2 times 125 meters divided by 6.30 meters per second per second, all of that to the one-half power. And if I work that out, I find that t, quite by coincidence, is 6.3 seconds. Okay? And so now that I know the time, I can then use the second kinematic equation, v is equal to v naught plus a t, to find my final speed. So v is equal to v naught, which is 0 meters per second, plus my acceleration, which is 6.3 meters per second per second, times my time, which is 6.3 seconds. And if I multiply that out, I find that my speed at the bottom of the bobsled run is 39.7 meters per second. Okay? So that's a complete solution to the problem. We took what looked like a two-dimensional kinematics problem and turned it into a one-dimensional kinematics problem. Now I will remind you, for those of you who like uh, practicing solving one-dimensional kinematics problems, that there is more than one way to solve this problem. The other way that we could have done the problem, and one of the tricks that I often use to avoid solving uh, quadratic equations, is I could have solved for the final speed before I solved for the time. And the way I would have done that is I would have used this kinematic equation. I know everything in this kinematic equation, a and delta x, to find the final speed without solving for time first. Okay, so that's that problem. I'll wish you luck, and I'll see you again next time.